NASA does not see any end to giving up on the SLS rocket despite how much the rocket project hasn't seen any success. But the most important thing is that NASA has a bigger dream for the rocket. The juicy advantages in NASA's dream is how the SLS rocket could be a game changer for space exploration by carrying out flight from one planet in deep space to another. But it seems like NASA's dream will be gradually shattered due to the continuous trouble the SLS rocket keep dishing out to NASA. The project seems to now run very sluggishly to the extent you will agree with us that NASA may seek SpaceX's attention to get the SLS project up and running. Today we'll discuss how the SLS rocket project is becoming an avenue for NASA to keep brainstorming in vain, thereby making the company lose respect. The SLS rocket is a super heavy lift launch vehicle, allowing human exploration beyond the Earth's orbit. It's the only rocket with the power and capabilities to transport Orion, astronauts and cargo directly to the moon in a single mission. The world's most powerful powerful rocket SLS can carry more cargo to deep space than any other vehicle due to its greater payload mass, volume capabilities and energy. The evolvability of the SLS rocket means that it's possible to fly more missions including human flights to the moon and Mars and robotic science missions to the moon, Mars, Saturn and Jupiter. The SLS crew has delivered and is preparing for the Artemis 1 mission, the first exploration class rocket constructed by NASA for human space travel since the Saturn V. Engineers and industrial partners are making progress on the delivery of rockets of the upcoming Artemis missions. To meet America's future goals for deep space missions, SLS will grow into configurations with greater power. SLS is built for deep space missions and will deliver Orion and other cargo to the moon approximately a thousand times farther away than the International Space Station. The high-performance rocket will provide the power necessary to propel Orion to the moon at a speed of 24,500 miles per hour. The next heavy lift rocket being developed by NASA will be able to travel to destinations beyond an asteroid near Earth, the Moon or Mars. The SLS may potentially explore Pluto's moon or bring back samples from other distant planets. An uncrewed flyby mission to Pluto's moon Charon, sample return missions to Jupiter's moon Europa or Saturn's moon Titan, or a sample gathering flight through Jupiter's atmosphere or the ice water jets of Saturn's moon Enceladus are all said to be possible with the Space Launch System's 130,000 kg launch capabilities. Future science spacecraft will be able to carry larger propulsion systems and more fuel due to the payload capacity of the SLS, allowing them to cut mission duration and carry more equipment. To reach the outer planets, prior spacecraft required numerous gravity assist maneuvers around the inner planets to achieve the necessary velocity. The SLS's bigger propulsion systems would enable more direct trajectories, increasing mission duration by years. SLS also can reduce the number of separate launches required for complex missions. Using existing rockets, a mission to collect samples from an outer planet would necessitate multiple launches to build a spacecraft. With SLS, the mission might be accomplished with fewer or possibly a single launch, lowering complexity. These are the juicy benefits of why NASA is still staying put in to making sure that everything works pretty fine with the SLS rocket, but it looks like efforts run down the drain. The SLS rocket project keeps hitting the rock and NASA is getting frustrated since taxpayers' money is being invested in the program, yet there is nothing to show for it. Let's look at some of the bottlenecks the SLS project has been facing right from time to time. First, the tank broke because someone dropped a very expensive tank dome, which made it impossible to fix. Obviously, if this was a real manufacturer, it wouldn't be too hard to build a new one. But because everything is carefully made by hand, with nail files by elves, this caused a big delay. Then the welder broke, so this one comes from the archives. But NASA spent months setting up a new friction steer welding machine, only to discover that a subcontractor hadn't strengthened the floor, which caused the machine to break and have to be rebuilt from the ground up. Two years later, the welding machine broke down again and the engines needed more work. Despite 40 years of flight history, the SLS, once reusable, still has technical problems and has never been able to meet the original certification criteria. The engine contractor could charge more per engine for the used engines 
that were already collecting dust in a warehouse that it cost to build them in the first place, but there is a thrust structure between the fuel tank and the engine. The SLS project got paraffin into the plumbing, but it wasn't found until after the plumbing was finished. Surprisingly, food, tanks and engines often cause rocket crashes like the Antares. Because of this, everyone knows to watch out for it and take precautions. Attaching each engine on a rocket takes a month, or maybe even longer if it's done side by side. In contrast, a 737 spins off the assembly line in nine days. Bill Nelson, NASA's administrator, had also expressed his regrets over NASA's SLS project that have taken years to be completed and deemed unsuccessful. This has been in the works for years, NASA administrator Bill Nelson told the press in the week leading up to the expected launch of the SLS for Artemis 1. Space is hard, and that's true for the politics of space too. Nelson has compared SLS's delays and financial overruns to those of the James Webb Space Telescope, which according to Nelson, has now produced outstanding results. As the SLS program and Artemis mission progress, NASA will use different contracts in the future, focusing on contractor efficiency by not rewarding cost overruns. Over time, the $10 billion budget for the SLS has doubled, and the rocket's launch has been pushed back six years from 2016 to 2022. The program was started by Congress and President Obama in 2010, using hardware from the shuttle era that had been changed. That, they thought, would give them a fairly easy and a doable way to get started. But it hasn't been like that. Critics have called the SLS the Senate launch system to poke fun at the fact that the budget is split between the contractors in powerful states like politicians and congressional districts. At the same time the SLS was getting started, the Obama administration was pushing for launch services to be offered for a fee. No one could have predicted how quickly SpaceX's reusability mantra would catch on, which other companies are now copying to save money. The SLS was never meant to go up against these launch systems that can be used more than once. Still, as we look to the future and plan to explore deep space, the SLS could be seen as a dinosaur. For many, it's been painful to see traditional aerospace contractors like Boeing struggle to get the rocket off the ground. At the same time, new space startups like SpaceX continue to change the game of the space industry. At first, both sides of Congress were shocked by the idea of moving away from large, well-known and expensive aerospace companies, which are often also defense companies. Congress also told Boeing and other companies like Northrop Grumman that they had to work on the SLS. That said, it cost around $50 billion to contract SLS, Orion and Ares. That's a lot of money that could pay off more than 200 student loans. Experts who have been watching space for a long time wonder if SLS will last long now that new space can compete with old contractors quickly. Each launch of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy costs well over $100 million. What about the SLS? Some sources say that each launch costs about $4 billion. Eric Berger, a long-time space reporter, says each launch costs at least $2 billion. But don't forget about the Starship from SpaceX. If Starship reaches even half of its potential, Berger writes in Ars Technica, it will exceed the SLS rocket in every possible way. It's more powerful, far less expensive and fully reusable, and it can launch hundreds of times a year, not once. As long as nothing bad happens and the first launch goes well, SLS will be NASA's main workhouse for the time being. But Berger and others are looking at Starship which could allow for many more launches at a much lower cost. The Starship Human Landing System has also been chosen as the Lunar Landing System for the Artemis missions. NASA was brave to do that. It was a vote of confidence in a company that has already changed the future of space travel for humans. And this choice could have even bigger effects. In the future, Starship could completely replace the SLS and Orion. Do you think that NASA's SLS rocket could get off the ground someday? Well, they got to hurry because Elon Musk has officially announced the SpaceX first orbital Starship launch sooner than you think. Who will win? Just click on the video to know more.